Hello everybody and welcome to this wonderful Wednesday. It is indeed a wonderful day. I hope wherever you are that your teaching week is going well and that you've been having lots of fun and energetic lessons with your students. So I have a question for you for today and that question is what's the most important musical skill that you can teach your piano students? What's the most important musical skill that you can teach your piano students? Just have a think about it for a moment because there are so many to choose from really. Um, however, I think there is one that is fundamental and I'm going to tell you what it is and why it's fundamental. So the one fundamental, I wonder whether you've got this, it's rhythm. And as teachers, it is so important that we are able to uh, help our students develop their sense of rhythm, to develop an understanding of what rhythm is, and very importantly, to give them tools so that they can tap rhythms, play rhythms independently and securely. Now, over my Easter holidays, I've been doing a bit of research, as I do, and a bit of reading. And one of my favourite books for research, actually, no, one of my favourite books is this book. A wonderful book called The Child as Musician, and it's edited by um, Professor Gary McPherson. Now, in here is a chapter um, that I have read on many, many occasions before. And it's by uh, Gary McPherson and the late Janet Mills. Um, as I say, I've read it many times, but this time a sentence or two really, really jumped out at me and stopped me in my tracks and made me think. And that is about this idea of rhythm. Let me just read you a little bit of it. And for those of you that are interested, it's on in the, the, the second, third edition, I'm not sure, second edition, page 181. And they say that... Um, First of all, they're talking about the mechanics of reading notation, right? And they're saying, you know, actually how difficult it is. Um, and it says, highly developed readers of notation, that's you and I, display an ability to link the sound with the notation. So in other words, we can hear the sound that we see. We don't go to the instrument to hear it. We go to the instrument to actually play it, but we hear it ourselves. But he goes on to say, young instrumentalists, however, may have more trouble reading rhythm than pitch because pitch production with many instruments is possible without internalization of pitch. I'll just say that again. Pitch production with many instruments is possible without internalization of pitch. Um, while rhythm production is difficult without auditory coding. So let's just look at that in a little more detail pitch production it's possible to produce pitches on an instrument without having an internal representation so for example here's a little bit of pitch let's take those three notes i don't have to hear them i don't have to hear them if i've got my piano in front of me i can push the keys down and i can make the sound to represent that. I haven't got my piano, I have got my chimba. There we go. I don't need to hear it first. I can just uh, go and push the button, literally button pushes. And the same with any of these, here's another one. I don't need to hear it. I should hear it, I absolutely should hear it, but I don't need to. I can bypass the ear completely and play that. Yeah. So that's what can happen with pitch production. So in many ways, you know, that, let's put that to one side. But with rhythm, rhythm production is difficult, I would say almost impossible, without having the uh, internal representation of rhythm. Now somewhere here, I have got a nice simple rhythm card, which seems to, there we go. So let me show you a simple rhythm card. There we are. So let me just count you in. And I want you to clap that rhythm. One, two, three, four. And. So when you look at that, you have that internal representation already in you. You've learnt it. You've seen that rhythm many times. And you can hear and feel what it is like 
and you can go and play it on the piano. Here's another one. Let's look at this one. Slightly harder, so you might need to work that one out a little bit more, but I'm going to give you two beats. I'm going to give you two bars of two in, so it's one and a two and a one and a two. Yeah, so you can do that as well. You can develop, you can, you've already got that internal representation of rhythm. But our students don't. Many of our students don't. Whether they're beginners, they particularly don't. And even our older students, our adults, even at grade eight, they can't always represent the rhythm that they see in front of you. There is nowhere else for them to go. The piano is not going to represent that rhythm, is it, for them? And so we, the teacher, this is why I think this is the most important job we have, is to help our students to sense the rhythm, to understand rhythm patterns, and to be able to produce a rhythm pattern independently themselves. So the biggest thing you can do as a teacher is to focus on the rhythm. Not on the pitch all the time. We tend, I feel, to focus very much on teaching pitch. We kind of get a bee in a bonnet about it. Can they read the names of the notes? Yes, that's important. But do we focus on rhythm in the same way? I, I don't know. You ask yourself that question and see how true or false, how much you can agree with that. So how can you focus on rhythm with your students? Well, you need to give them the tools. That's the first thing. And that tool might be, to begin with, syllabic counting. You might use time names. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. Here's that one. So you might teach ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta. You see, that's a tool the student can then use to actually independently work out a rhythm that is similar to that. Um, you might use fruit words, you know, you might use running walk, running walk. It's another tool. It will help them. You could even use uh, with older children, particularly and adults, metrical counting. Metrical counting is important, really important in the learning process. Not with beginners so much, but certainly as they come on. Um, and you'd be counting one and two, three and four. So one thing you can do with metrical counting that is so important, and that is to get your students to count aloud as they play. Get them to count aloud as they play. And I think if you watch yourself in your piano teaching, you will find that you pick up a lot of the work with the counting. You pick up a lot of the work with the counting. So I often watch teachers and they do all the work for the student. In fact, I've done talks before now about the lazy piano teacher. This is what I mean. You need to take yourself back. If your student is ever going to become independent with their rhythm, stop counting for them. But insist, 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 insist that they do the counting as they play. Okay. And then you'll start to notice a difference. It's really hard to play and count at the same time. Great, that's all part of the challenge. I think I'll continue this theme a little bit more when I see you next time. But in the meantime, the most important skill, musical skill, is how to teach rhythm, giving your students that independence to be able to work out a rhythm themselves. That's the first thing. Second thing is, to help them become independent, you have to step back. You have to let them do the counting. So make sure you're a little bit lazy now in your teaching. Of course, you're not lazy at all. You're highly active, but you're just not doing all the work for the student. Oh, that was fun. I don't know whether there's anybody listening or not, but thank you so much if you are. And yes, I can see there are people. I can see Sharon and aha, and somebody over in Vancouver. Hello there. And Claire, thank you so much for that. Thank you for joining me. And um, I'll give that a bit more thought and I'll be back probably next Wednesday to share some more thoughts on rhythm for you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.